tonight is October 12, 2021. It's getting really late, almost 3 a.m. But I want to show you an update on this because uh, we'll try to finish it uh, this coming weekend. This is the 810 amplifier. Uh, I wish it was lit up so you could see how it's going to look, but it's not ready for that yet. <clears throat> My goodness well what shall I say here um, what I did inside for the chassis is I did like this the uh, big transformer this guy right here mounts over here there's the tubes right there so I built them on some of that particle board and I'm gonna mount that in there right now it's just sitting there I like to make little assemblies and uh, put them in there oh, I think I've got all the parts see what I did right here so you can see the tubes you'll be able to see them in there lit up I think it's going to be beautiful I did this in my 833 amplifier and I really like it so this is the, the, the same idea um, let's see some important things here look here here's the umbilical cord this is one end the, the two ends are the same see this is a big seven pin connector I've got uh, number 14 wire running to every pin there's the uh, mill and high voltage connector and then there is a ground uh, strap between the two chassis. The other end of the cable looks exactly the same. I actually labeled one uh, power supply and the other one amplifier only because of the way that the wires conveniently lay out. This, right, this wire right here is a copper, brand new, copper uh, core spark plug wire. It fits in there very nicely so that there's no gaps around it. Solders in very good. So I'm using, using these Millen connectors right here. See, this is what mounts in the amplifier and the power supply. And of course, uh, this part right here, wherever it is, right there, screws onto it. Uh, I'm not actually going to put a, uh, an AC uh, power cord into the amplifier. I'm going to bring over. Uh, some AC from the power supply because it's only uh, lights to filaments and bar supply. Here's the, the female adapters that mount in the chassis. This switch right here will be used for the filament on off. Let's lay that down. This is the filament on off. It's also a fuse. It's also a, a 3 amp fuse circuit breaker, circuit breaker switch. Uh, I'm going to put this just for safety and <laughs> and the dramatic effect this is the high voltage on off switch because I got several of these little things right there you flip that thing up and when you go high voltage there you go and you can close it back down these are some uh, nice heavy duty made in USA uh, fuse holders I have this thing right here if you don't know what this is this is a burr a deburring tool I've had this thing my dad gave me that in about 1975. That's, that has been a jewel. Um, I, I don't really think that there's a whole lot extra to show right now, but I did have to get some of the, you know, the metal work done. And we'd be spending all of our time. This is a transformer we're going we're gonna to use for the input. 4, 8, and 16 ohm here, and uh, 8.5K or whatever they rated. What they rated? 8,400 ohms. If you can read that that's the input transformer I was going to use these two transformers right here for the filaments but I've decided it would be easier and uh, just to mount and deal with by using this these are some more of those industrial transformers industrial control transformers that I have talked about before and if you find them you want them see they're very simple that thing says 14 6. So it's uh, 24, excuse me, dash 6. It's 24 volts at 6 amps. Or you can put them parallel for 12 volts at 12 amps. And uh, I need 10 volts at 10 amps. So I've got plenty of current. And I'll have to put a resistor, which is not hard to do. See, there's the 115 in right there. I'll put a series resistor in it and, uh, and uh, take the 12 volts down to 10. Yeah, I just parallel and parallel so now I got 12 at uh, 
12 amps. That's just to light the tubes up. The filament transformer. Um, schematic, yes. I want you guys to see my schematics. I know they're crude. Let's just look at one at a time because uh, when it bleeds through, it's kind of hard to see. Okay. See, what I'm doing is I'm... Um, that's on that umbilical cord. Those, those are the pin numbers or whatever. It doesn't matter what they are as long as I know what I'm doing. I'll bring AC in from the power supply and run it through that little circuit breaker switch and then another, maybe another 3 amp just to be safe. XX goes off to the uh, filament transformers over here. I drew two of them here, but there's only going to be one. And off the center tap of the filament transformer, that's where the meter goes to ground. So I'll be measuring cathode current. There'll be a little bit of grid current in there too, so it won't be purely plate current but it'll be you know 95 percent plate current that'll be good i think i'm going to put a zero to one amp there the uh, high voltage right here just goes straight off to that milling connector output no negative feedback yet uh, the way that I'll, I'll have to show you when it comes time how i evaluate these transformers it's really really so easy and it works you put a load across right here whatever this load is going to be think about 11k uh, and then you can start putting different load impedances over here and making sure that it stays at 11k or thereabouts it's, it's too complicated to get into right now here's that uh, that little Hammond driver transformer uh, I'm gonna put a, a switch in here so I can select 4 8 or 16 the bridge just comes in goes through a variac a bridge and then it goes uh, to the center tap with a bias meter, uh, some little digital bias meters, and then the bias voltage right here goes out to that umbilical cord and goes over, let me show you, to the power supply. Okay, sorry for, I only got uh, two hands here. Power supply, just wanted to, I just want to get one at a time because you, you, can, you can see through the, the darn thing and it makes it, it, makes it even more complicated. Okay, here's where I'll come in with a little IEC connector so I don't have to uh, drag around a power cord, a 20 amp fuse. I decided to use a fuse. See, this goes straight over to the bias and bias and filament. I got a main AC switch. And I'll have a red light come on. And then I've got this bias sense relay. This goes over to the bias coming from the amplifier. And, in, and it'll pick up about 60 volts. So if it's less than 60 volts, it won't pick up. And if this doesn't pick up, of course the light won't come on. When the light's on, that means you can take that, flip that big switch up like you're fixing to fire a nuclear missile and uh, flip the switch up and turn the high voltage on. When the high voltage comes on, it goes through uh, uh, this power supply uh, set right here, which I've already shown. It doesn't have all the components on there yet. Here's the bridge. Uh, here's uh, the input capacitors and the output capacitors. It's going to have a choke mounted right here. And uh, there's, the, there's those small capacitors. There's the big ones in the choke that will be on there. And then I've done this on just about every amplifier built in the last few decades. As I put like a 1 ohm, 1 watt resistor. Stand it up, mount some, uh, some little ceramic standoffs, put the high voltage in here, and the high voltage comes out over here, and you put that little one ohm, one watt. It doesn't have to be one ohm. It can be 0.47 ohms or 0.33 or whatever. And uh, if you get a short out here, this guy explodes. Now, I know they make high voltage switches and I bought some, but you know what? I trust this more. And that's where I'm going to do that. Here's that uh, white wire. You want to you wanna make darn sure that your, your power supply and your amplifier can never become disconnected. Because if they do, and then you get between them and you got the high voltage running over there, then you're going to provide the return path and it's going to not be a good day. Here's the here's the bias coming in again. Like I say, the, when the bias comes up properly, it'll pick up this relay and then actually allow you to turn. If you turn this on uh, without this relay picked up, nothing will happen. It's really pretty simple, isn't it? So there you go. Here's uh, the choke I'm going to use. It's, it's a 500 milliamp choke. It's nothing nothing fancy and it may not even be worth a whole lot it's one and a half henry's at 500 milliamps 
but that is uh, all I probably need to say for the night. Here are those little uh, circular uh, voltmeters. I think I'm going to mount it over here. I was going to mount a, a high voltage uh, meter and a plate current meter, but I think just a plate current meter now. And I'm not sure exactly how I'll monitor the high voltage. Probably won't. We'll measure it and know what it is, but not actually monitor it. So there'll just be one big meter right here with some some pilot lights or whatever, whatever it takes to make it look reasonable. I'll show you the back of it if I could turn this thing around. I don't know if I can do this very well without pushing it off of the floor. I don't want to do that, do I? Okay, yeah, I can get it around here. Yeah, see, there's that ground. That's what the white wire will go to the ground strap between the two. Uh, there's a high voltage connector, there's the, the seven pin umbilical cord, and this is, uh, uh, beats me. <laughs> I forgot what that is, a fuse? I don't know, it's not important right now. Oh yeah, I was going to put the uh, AC connector right here, but I'm going to run the AC into here, through here, and not have, it's not going to have its own uh, AC cord. And then the speaker terminals will be over there marked for whatever impedance values we think are the most important. Yeah, the impedance values of this transformer, I think they're going to work out. I know that I can get a good 8 ohms out of them, but uh, I'll have to uh, actually do all the measurements. See, here's the primary right here, these three right here. Center tap, plate, plate. And then they start right here with this thing called S, and then impedance goes up, but you can get like 8 ohms between something like here and like these two are here. And then you can get four of them between something like here or there or whatever. I don't remember. But those will all be mapped out and I'll be using that little impedance bridge. So anyway, if you guys got some thoughts about this schematic over here, if I'm doing something really dumb or I could do something better, I'm always open to suggestions. Um, I think that's about it. It's, uh, you know, this will be painted and it'll, it'll be dutied up so it looks kind of, kind of cool. There you go. Thanks for watching and, uh, stay safe.